Sanji, y'all, welcome. Welcome to another Tuesday night. Scotch on the Bayou. We are live. Let me know if you can hear me. Let me know if you can see me. Um, and we are going to get rocking and rolling tonight. So glad everybody could be here and talk um, about some of the off the shelf, easy to get um, Scotch whiskeys. And we'll get into that too in a minute. I want to want to get over to the comments and see all the folks that are here. We've got folks piling in. I'm so excited to finally be back on Tuesday nights with good Wi-Fi and loud and clear. Daniel Hayes, thank you so much. Uh, no tech problems tonight. I'm excited about this, truly. Zach, my buddy, here we go. Yes, we indeed, we are about to head out. Um, I just feel like Tuesday nights are friend night, you know, we're just all like, what else you got to do on a Tuesday night? Come sit down in front of your computer, pour yourself a dram. You're talking amongst friends here, right? Um, my honey, Z uh, Mark Rainer is here and my brother, Ethan. Uh, yes. And Ethan is responsible for all the graphics that you see, whether, and also this painted can't really, I need to like that a little bit better, but it's a slanja y'all with an alligator painting that he did for me. Um, so thanks for being here. And Andrew Butler, again, God love you for getting up at the crack of middle of night <laughs> over in the UK to be with us. Andrew and I've got something planned. Um, we're still trying to figure out the date for that, but it's going to be a lot of fun coming up, coming up pretty soon. Um, yeah, so we've got in my buddy Jennifer is here. Hey, Jen, good to see you. Thanks for being here. And Chad, uh, glad to make it tonight. Yes, Chad's coming in from Canada. Thanks for being here, my friend. I appreciate it. And Jim, Kim Rederick, Jim, Jim, thank you so much. Jim is one of our latest camp dreamers. He joined the channel's uh, membership. So we have that going on. Um, and you'll see he'll have an icon by his name. It's a way to help support the channel. And um, so we're excited. Uh, we've got um, Jimmy Jazz was the first camp dreamer and George Kaplan, Martin, uh, Ethan, uh, Daniel Hayes, I just talked about. Um, so, yeah, we're getting some camp dram folks in there for sure. Um, I'm pretty excited about it. And so let me do a shout out to this guy, to Daniel. Daniel's in um, upstate New York and he just got back from Scotland. Um, and not only that, but he did the same Isla Whiskey Academy, Jennifer and I did, um, and except it was a totally different experience. They got to do all these other different types of things. And I cannot wait to um, pick his brain and hear all about his trip. So we might be doing that in, and you can follow him on the uh, Black Barn Pub on Instagram is an absolutely gorgeous, uh, home bar. Uh, so check him out for sure. But yeah, Daniel cannot wait to hear about your experience. The pictures have been incredible. Um, so let's see who else is on there. Tell me what y'all are drinking um, as we get into our subject here. And hey, George, again, cheers. And little Artie. Artie's his friend, the sweet little rabbit. Yeah. And um, so thanks for being a member, George. I really appreciate it. Appreciate all the support. And hey, John, good to see you too. Glad that you are here. Awesome. Wonderful. It is good to see that sound and vision are both good. <laughs> now, I don't know if I'm sound of mine, but we'll make it entertaining nonetheless. I promise. Um, good. All good. Yay. I like it when it's all good. That's awesome. Um, oh, Luck Ness, great to see. You. Thanks for being here on the Tuesday. I appreciate it, friend. I do. I do. Um, Zach, new member. Woohoo! Yay! Zach just became a new member. Thank you very much, my friend. I appreciate that. Yay, yay, yay. Whiskey Scout. Hey, I'm so glad you were able to come in too. And you'll have to, I want everybody to really chime in. No guests tonight. This is just all of us talking amongst ourselves, um, about those go-to distilleries that have a great core range. Um, and we'll, We'll talk more about those. So thanks so much for being here, man. Um, Chad, thank you for being a member at Camp Drammer all the way up, up in the frozen north. Um, we are actually might get a frost tonight, which is crazy. This is like the earliest ever in Louisiana, just about. Uh, so 
thanks for thanks for sending that cold front because I needed I needed it was getting hot still up in here. We were in our fourth summer here in Louisiana, so thanks for sending that cold air down. And Chuck Malt Minion, good to see you, friend. Thanks for being part of it. I appreciate that. Ah, Scott, good to see you. I saw your comment today on the the answer of the question. Um, about and I think you got a couple of friends that think real um real similar so it's gonna be really interesting to see that I'm looking forward to it um all right Mark Broda hey Bubba what you doing he's my little brother <laughs> uh what to pour I don't know we're gonna get into some really cool stuff here um here pretty soon and it is with Andrew and of course with Hoagie yes international night I'm doing well my, 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 my German friend, <laughs> your Southern lady friend is doing great. Um, we, uh, yeah, it's good to be back on. Thanks for getting up in the middle of the night to watch us. I appreciate that. Um, really looking forward to it. So, oh man, just so many people. I love it. Just everybody's chatting and talking and that's exactly what we want. Um, so yeah, today, today I wanted to talk more about about those bottles that, um, you know, we really, we really maybe started our journey with and, um, we kind of may have moved on. Some of us may have moved on from those core expressions, you know, but they are the ones that got us here. They are the ones that got us to the table and then, you know, made such an impact at some point that we wanted to learn more or we wanted to say, well, if this is what, you know, the mass produced version of this distillery does, then wonder what other things they do. Or is it a distillery bottle or is it a, a single cask and different things? And yeah, we may get into that, but those core range off the shelf, local liquor store, our case, grocery store, what are those go-to distilleries that have a consistent value add? You know, they're always on. And most importantly, the taste. You know, they're really, they just really taste good. So I want to talk more about those things um, today uh, and kind of what, what our thoughts are. And um, maybe we'll talk about a region or we'll just kind of, do some shout outs and then talk about one in particular. Um, but yeah, and, so, and I think too, you know, we, we get into that bottle chasing when there are really good drams at the camp. So what we do, most of my <laughs> off the shelves are at the camp. I was looking for my Highland part 12. I was looking all over for it and I realized it's at the camp. Um, I was looking for a, Kent, a Kent, Kenta Rubin 14 is at the camp. Those things we tend to keep at the camp. And I think one of the reasons that we keep those bottles, granted, some of us may be on a whiskey journey and where we are, it's further down the road. We're getting those fancier, highly, you know, more, more hard to find or uh, special type of casking bottles. But these bottles to me are like no brainers. I don't have to think hard about them, Right. I mean, I know that if I get, for example, I'm just going to pull this one. Um, Glen Warrenji, the La Santa. Come on, work. Yeah, there we go. The La Santa. I mean, it is really hard to, okay, now we can come back to me. <laughs> it is really hard to, there we go. It's really hard to beat this bottle for the value. This is a great value. But like, so one of my go-to distilleries is Glen Morangy. The 10, you know, the 10 bourbon matured, the La Santa, Sherry, and the Kenta Rubin, the Port. I mean, they're solid. The other reason I like to keep those on is if I have someone over who's not into scotch, maybe might be into bourbon, but aren't really into, have not really, you know, jumped in like I have into a scotch journey themselves, I'm going to pour something like that or a Deanston 12 or a Glendro 12, something like that for them to try. I'm probably not 
going to pick one of these other bottles over here to do that. So in my sense, I want to give them something to try that's I think has good value and um, tastes good or wouldn't drink it, but wouldn't totally um, overwhelm them with maybe something like a Port Charlotte 16, <laughs> something, something that, you know, or some, you know, special single cask Edward Hour or something like that. Um, so anyway, I'm just kind of, I want to see what you all think about that. So we go, I already know I'm back. Um, I'm behind on uh, comments here. I want to see what's up. Ah, Zach Andrews. Thank you so much for um, loving some spring bank. And I'm trying to see, ah, there was a super chat. I'm trying to figure this out. <laughs> Thank you so much, my friend. I appreciate it. Um, oh, and look who here. Yeah. Jen from one is sweet. <laughs> hey, Mark. Good to see you there. Um, good to see y'all. So let me know. Um, so Andrew talks about, as you know, I've got a lot of things that are not core bottles, but it do have been buying Lafoy 10 since 1982. I would think that is an absolute legit string of good quality purchases there. <laughs> and, true. Uh, and why is that? They do what they do well and they keep doing it that way, right? Um, yeah, it is It is hard to beat that Lafroy 10 for sure. Um, I'm going... I think I'm going to do a kill home in tonight. So that's, that's not surprising either, Mark. <laughs> but, but like you and like, uh, Kim rhetoric, um, having a Holland park tonight. I guarantee you that's what's in his glass. Uh, yeah. But anyway, kill Holman, I think has a really good solid, you know, core offering, but boy, they're special casks. Mm, they, they do, they do get really tasty. Don't they? So that La Santa held the king of the hill for a long time, just surprisingly solid and rightly. The straight Glenmo 10 is just core goodness. It really is. Uh, so certainly goes without saying. I, I really, I think most of the things that we're going to talk about tonight aren't going to be too controversial. Um, they're really good, solid um, expressions, or they would, would not be available, they'd be discontinued or for some reason they would go away. If you all have not um, checked out Scotch for Dummies King of the Hill series, it's binge worthy. Okay. It is amazing how these guys have gone through and picked bourbons, uh, bourbon matured, sherry matured, peated, and put them head to head um, in a blind to come out with what they think is at the King of the Hill, you know, um, that has, and they're about to get into their big tournament of sorts where all the champions go against each other, um, with some wild cards thrown in there. So make sure you check that out on Thursdays, um, nine o'clock central time. Um, but yeah, it's, and it really is. And for the price point, and I think the other part about Glenmo as some of the other ones, most other ones I have picked tonight, um, is just consistency. You know, it, you're, you're pretty much going to get that same taste flavor profile every time you know, you get a La Santa, or every time you get a, a, a Glen Motin. So I think that's um, really, yeah. And another point, yeah, it's really damn good value. Um, when you think about this being a 10 year old, a 12 year old, a 14 year old, um, those, those are much pricier in other bottlings and other distilleries for sure. Um, Glendo has been my go-to. Hey, Dustin, <laughs> I know you are. Um, when it comes to, uh, to convert someone it, it really does. It, that, it is a great way to get a bourbonite to come to the dark side, right? Um, especially if they're very big on the sweet, I'll get them with a Kenta Rubin. I'll just like, here, let me give you something let me give you something that's not corn syrup <laughs> that you'll really like. Um, baby Laddie is awesome. Oh, yeah. Okay. So like a, a classic Laddie is another really good one. And Chuck says, I always keep a, a bottle of Glenmo tin on my shelf. Absolutely. Well, I've got 
I got a couple now because our local Walmart was putting uh, liquor on clearance the other day. And I ended up getting four bottles of Glen Motin for $15 a piece. Mm-hmm. 10 years, 10 year old scotch, single malt for $15 a pop. So yeah, <laughs> I was, I was quite handy. So those, you know, a couple of those are going to the camp, no brand or drams, right? Um, I do enjoy the core range of Ben Romick and Glen Gorn, among many others too. Yes. I don't get enough Ben Romick. Um, I have some and, uh, the Glen Gorn I've had other than one bottle I bought over there because you just, that's another thing, accessibility. Um, and it's weird in it because some people are, can easily get some expressions where others are just like, there's no inhale. They're ever going to see that bottle. And it's a core range. Um, my area doesn't have as wide of a range um, as some. They're getting better. There's a couple of retailers who are trying really, really hard here. Um, and hopefully that's why I'm trying to grow, <laughs> to grow the scotch drinking um, uh, population in South Louisiana so we can get more um, different types of, of whiskeys. Um, but the Ben Romick, you have to, so Chad, I'm going to ask you to um, pop this back on here. Um, of those, what are the one or two expressions for for either Ben Romick or, or Glen Goyen that you really like? The I've got a, a Glen Goyen 18 that I was able to get in Colorado when I was on vacation. And then um, I think I have the chapter one um, of, the, of the other of the cast strength, I think. That's about it. Um, <laughs> yeah, Jennifer, Jennifer and I both like some classic laddie. That's for sure. And for those who don't know, um, you'll see when, when I released the video of the tour of the camp, I basically painted the inside of our camp, the color of the classic laddie tin. That is what you call subliminal marketing. Cause I didn't even realize I had picked that paint color until it was already done. So cheers to the marketing group of, at Proclati for subliminally making me go find that color to paint the inside of our camp <laughs> and our bathroom that we're just finishing tomorrow. Um, so Andrew says, it's surprising how many non-Scotch drinkers actually like Lafroig and others generally go for a Balvenie Doublewood or an Anna 12. Yeah, you know, it's it's interesting. I, I found... When I when I was first over to to Scotland, not knowing what Scotch really was, just thinking sillily that it was like bourbon, um, I didn't pay a whole lot of attention to the fact that there was a peated or a smoky version of it, or and there was a non peated version of it. And um, when I went to Lafroy after going to Oban a couple of days before that, um, I absolutely adored the peat and the smoke. Uh, right off the bat, um, have quite a few friends that the first time that they had whiskey or had scotch had the peated um, version and loved it. Now, there are some that go, oh, what is this? I don't want it. Um, but we in the South smoke everything. We smoke meats. We, you know, we have barbecue. We, um, Mark has a smoker. He, uh, it just it is a way, you know, of, of life down here to have smoke associated with meats, usually not liquids, but well, we do have a thing called liquid smoke. If you want to add smoke to like a stew or something. Um, but yeah, so we're used to that. So it, it was not off putting to me at all. I absolutely loved it. So Mark Broda, again, the great thing, uh, uh, thing about great core bottles is that even though they may uh, change a wee bit over, they're incredibly consistent. Yeah. I mean, talk about consistency. You, Andrew did not get mad at that brand since 1982, since he started buying it. I can't say that for too many other things, you know, that, that you were that brand, you know, loyal because, you, and, and you are because you feel like you're getting a good value, you enjoy it, right? Um, 
Tracy. The special casts are um, are unbelievable. I may have to open your kill home and appreciation. Ah, society saw turns. You might have to do that when you come down to <laughs> come down to Baton Rouge, Mark. Just pop that in your car when you're coming down here. Hopefully, in a couple of weeks. Um, <laughs> oh goodness, that's funny. So, um, Ardbeg Ten, yeah. So range wise. Um, I, I think Ardbeg is a really solid range. When you look at your tin, um, and then especially Uga, uh, Ugi, Uga doll, that I think is my favorite. I really do like Corvrecken. I do. We Beastie is okay. You know, that's not my jam so much as the tin and, um, that Uga doll is just really hard to pass up. But usually Ardbeg tin, if I'm having someone try a peated scotch straight off and they want to go big, um, I will I will say, okay, here you go. That'll, that's good. Try Ardbeg tin. Um, Hoagie says he's finding himself um, buying other core bottles than the best integrity malt, which most agree is high quality just for the sake of variety. Who's with me? Yeah. So, and finding, you know, who's using that good malt. Um, I think I'm trying to, I'm follow, try, I think I've got, you followed there. Best malt. It, it is interesting to be able to say, you know, who's doing it right? Who's paying attention to what's going into creating their new make? Because that's going to set the bar. For, for what they're going to be coming from, you know, and doing for sure. The Port Charlotte heavily peated in 10 years. Well, yeah, you know, Brooklady just does. Now, Brooklady's specialty bottles, well, I ain't going to lie. I've, <laughs> I've dipped my toe in a couple of those, but boy, were they really good. But day in and day out, a classic Lotty, if you want to, you know, a Port Charlotte heavily peated is just, you know, it's just solid. Um, and you know what you're going to get when you pour it. So, yeah. So Jennifer started a whiskey club over in Houston and in, um, in the Houston area and she gave it the, the core Tamdu line. Yeah. And they absolutely flipped over it. it and it's not just sherry after sherry after sherry. I mean, their line very has a variation to it, you know, and all the way from the 15 to the cast strength bottles, the different batches to um, what is it? Their, their entry is a 10 or a 12. I forget. Um, so what's Daniel saying? We always have some Aaron, Ardner Merkin and Highland Park cast strength on the hand too. Almost always available and delish. Absolutely. Now see, that Aaron, golly, I am an Aaron fan girl. I can't, I can't lie. So this is, um, let me grab this off here. So this is Aaron 10. Let me see if I can do this again. Uh, where it says, yeah, I can see it. And then there we go. So this is Aaron 10. Uh, I'm getting there, y'all. Get my left and my right all mixed up. Um, and I have this new bottle, which is impossible to find in South Louisiana right now. And I have an old bottle. And one of the things I want to do is a blind between the two. I'm, I'm not even going to open this up just yet. Um, because I want to see if, if it's a perceived difference between the old bottling and the new bottling, or if it's, um, if it tastes the same, <laughs> I have a feeling it's going to be very different. Um, but I don't have anything in my glass yet. What am I doing? I'm almost 30 minutes. I don't have anything. Tell me what y'all are actually drinking right now. And then I'm going to show you something really fun. So one of the other distilleries I absolutely adore, um, their core range, but then they kind of get into some fun, especially wine caskings is Deanston. I, you know, I, Roy has been a fanboy of Deanston for a long time, but you know, I have to show you. So I had bought an older, 12 in the box um old packaging just opened it up yep that looks good and came home with it 
only to find that it did not have a front label. It has a back label, but it did not come with a front label. And see, it's even got even the old paper, the old paper label. So, um, and it has a broken cork right now. Well, dang, I may not be drinking this. See if I can, if I can surgically get this removed. Who has exacto knives on their desk at all times? Me. Let's see. Uh, maybe. Maybe. Ah, almost. I mean, <laughs> broken corks on a live show. Almost. Ah, ha, got it. I am determined. Okay. Mm. But yeah, consistency. Um... Deanston has always felt, I felt really consistent with that. I mean, 46%, no color. Oh man, sweet and spicy. Loving it. Loving it, loving it. Um, let's see who else. Trying to... <laughs> Like I don't have my glasses, my readers on, so I'm like going back and forth here. Um, hey Mike, thanks for being here. Um, I always fall back on Balvini. Founders Reserve is where I started. Single malt journey. Interesting, very interesting. Um, yeah, the the Bal I think Balvini's solid choice. Um, consistent, you know, between the double wood, um, the Caribbean cask. I know. If you, you know, if you go out, uh, if you go to a restaurant, if you go to a bar, <laughs> sometimes there's a struggle of what is out there that I actually want to, to have a pour of. And, you know, Balvini is usually the ones that I'm, I'm going after. Um, I, Glenlivets are usually available. They're, I don't, just don't seem to be my jam. I don't know. Uh, I like that illicit still, but the, the other ones are just kind of, they're not my thing, but the Caribbean cast is, is a super choice. Um, and that American Oak, I really like, I don't know. That was, I think that was more of a specialty bottle though. Um, but yeah, thanks Mike for that comment. I appreciate it. Um, let's see who else we've got. Um, <laughs> just looking so, oh, I'm, did I miss something from Mo? Oh, yeah. So Mo was saying he liked that Arden American. Um, I need to, to find, I only have like one of those. And I think that's the one I got up in Indiana last. Um, I saw that they've got some coming in to Texas, but I haven't had any, not too many. Uh, I think Fraser Hughes really got them off to a good start when he was distillery manager. So I didn't realize that, Daniel. I knew I didn't remember where Frazier came from. So yeah, Frazier is now the the um, manager at Ardenaho, which is absolutely gorgeous new distillery, newish distillery um, on Isla, and it looks over the Strait of Isla to Jura and the Paps, the two um, kind of humpback um, mountain there, and just absolutely gorgeous. Um, yeah. Uh, interesting. That's what I love about this group. You learn so, so, so much. Um, getting back on some, <laughs> getting back on some art bag. This girl and I know some art bags. So if you haven't caught, uh, not core range, but, uh, Jennifer and I ran through like four plus a couple special bottles of art bag, you know, committee, four committee releases and a couple special bottles. Check out that video. It's a lot of fun. It's long. I'll, I'll let you know that. But we went through all of them all, you know, for a couple of hours. So we, it's only 45 minutes long, but that portion of it is about 25 minutes. And, and we go through quite a few of them. Give some really good, really good uh, interest in there. Okay. Can't beat Pete and Sherry cask. Okay. Let's talk. Let's talk Pete and Sherry because they do go together like carrots and peas, right? Um, great point, Zach. I think one of my favorites is Lafroy lore for that Pete and Sherry. Oh, 
That is so tasty. There is uh, a Kilhoman PX that is very, very nice as well. Again, kind of getting out into the to the specialty bottles, but Lore is core, it's core range. So that that is a perfect example. Um, yep, back on the Ardbeg. I think it's Ardbeg night. Um, I got a I got a bottle of Iggy right here. It's just just so dang good. Um, cool. So Chad's talking about Aaron's core range as well. Even most of the NAS or non-age statement offerings just bought the Aaron port cast finished. Yes. So Mark JG was here with me um, earlier this summer um, and we went through some different port finishes and that Aaron port finish, I think ended up being our favorite Mark. Let me know um, if you remember. Uh, it is, it's just, and I've been on a port kick, even that bottle, one of the bottles from Starlight that um, I bought when went up and saw um, Greg and, and the dummies um, up in Indiana, which they got snow this week, which is crazy to me. Um, that one was a port finish, a white port finish. So I'm actually going to rework a video about port finishes and port in general as a little kind of whiskey ed. Um, but yeah, you were talking um, about the Oogie. Oh, the Aaron. So, <laughs> yeah. So the Aaron 10, but that Aaron 14, oh man, it's discontinued now, but thankfully I got a couple backup bottles because my buddy Zach and between Zach and Jennifer <laughs> took care of that. That one, that one is really very, very nice. Um, top shelf Dustin. Thanks for being here, friend. I appreciate you being with us tonight, tell us what you're drinking and what your core range favorite. Um, what are those distilleries that consistently do it, um, that bring in good value, um, that, you know, you're going to get, you know what to expect when you buy that bottle. Yeah. Um, so Hoagie's making a point to mark with all the nasty price hikes lately. And there definitely have been some, uh, and with everything else is going up, um, independent bottlers sadly taking a turn to very young or very pricey. And I've come some full circle to speak back at. So, yeah, that's interesting because sometimes it seems like we have to go out to um, an independent bottler at times to get um, maybe, maybe not even the... Uh, a super weird type of maturation. Maybe it's just a bourbon matured, but a little different. Um, and yeah, it's interesting. And then you, you're kind of coming back full circle back to the brand. Interesting. Uh, yellow submarine. I don't know friend if that's exactly core range, <laughs> but that was a really good bottle you brought. So, um, uh, Dustin here is a is a buddy of mine that we've we've shared many dram here and he's moving farther and farther away. You, dude, you gotta you gotta come back and visit more often. We did miss you this past weekend for sure. Um let's see. But it's really hard to um God, this Deanson is so good. I haven't had it in a while. I think that's another thing, too. You think, oh, well, I've had that one. I'm moving on to something maybe special or, you know, a different type of casking. I think sometimes coming back to these mainstay, off-the-shelf, mass-produced even um, offerings kind of resets you back to center, you know? It kind of recalibrates your palate back to... Um, maybe like your, I don't want to say basic scotch because I mean, this is, this is 12 years old and it's had some, I mean, it was, it was crafted to be this good, you know? So it's not a slouch. It's not, um, you know, it's not, it's not in a plastic, uh, handle for Andrew, if you know what I mean. You know, if you know, you know. But there's, there's really good value to that. 
Oh, man. God, I forgot how good that was. Let's just see. Oh. So if we're talking about entry, then tends to be available that I always enjoy is a bottle on hand is a Mac 12. Yeah. You know, um, it is entry level, but it's also kind of premier because it's a Macallan, right? And um, it's going to have the cherry influence. It's very, very pleasing. Um, that's a great choice. Yeah, it's always consistent. Um, <laughs> those, you would think they would really have have those. Um, they would be consistent with the amount of, of liquid that comes out of that facility. <laughs> Uh, one of these days I'll see it. It'll be interesting. Um, so is this what you're, you're drinking tonight, Mark? Is this anic? That's I'm trying to remember which one that is. Is that, that's not the, um, the accident, huh? Let's see. Let's... Our whiskey error releases as collectible as currency errors. <laughs> That would be interesting. The only problem I would say is the currency isn't going to be expended, but pop the top on that 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 bottle that got messed up and the liquid's gonna go poof. It's gonna go sanji all and <laughs> and be drunk. So I'm not so sure that that would um uh last very long. Yes, Mark. I mean Deanston corks. They may they may put quality in the uh liquid, but they got they got a problem with their um <laughs> well they got a problem with their with their cork situation. Okay, I no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I can't go to a screwed cap. Mm -mm. Nope. Nope. They they do. The Deanston corks. God love them. Bless their heart. Bless her cork breaking heart. Uh yeah. So Daniel's talking about hey Daniel, good to see you. Thanks. Um, thanks so much for being here. Um, always sad at every general release, typically aside from Glenn Scotia and Kilcarran. Oh, okay. I see what you're saying. Yeah. Um, so those, you know, that Kilcarran 12, and that's hard to beat. <laughs> it, and it is consistent. Um, I mean, there are variations from year to year a little bit, you know, but it's still, you know, you know what you're going to get. Um, Glenn Scotia 15, Mark JG. He's a big fan of that one. And actually he got me into Glenn Scotia only for me to get all excited and, <laughs> and go off the uh, rabbit hole into Victoriana and, and a couple of other ones like that. Uh, Aaron 10 is on sale at the store in my area tomorrow. And I was considering buying a, another couple of them. I, I mean, I've had it a couple of times. I haven't opened this bottle yet, but it's golly, that's really good. And, and Mark chime in, but I think, I think it's doing really well, right? In your, in your King of the Hill. Yep. And it's second to Balvenie double wood. Yeah, I mean, they're just really good. And, you know, they're good suggestions for people that are coming in and starting their, their journey, you know. Um, and core range doesn't have to be um, just like entry level. It There's some core ranges that are definitely a little higher priced. Um, this particular one is probably one of my favorites. And we'll get there. But, you know, Glendronic, whether it's, you know, Billy Walker's version or Rachel Berry's version, um, whichever it might be, they're just, um, for, for what you know it's going to be, it's, it's, it's very good. This is one of the older bottles. And the cork didn't break. <laughs> um, so this is actually one that's got... <sighs> <laughs> it's just um it's like a potpourri of almost I want to say like rum soaked raisins. I know that's counterproductive, but it with the sherry and but there's still a malt. You could still get that underlying malt there. 
Oh, man. That's interesting. Mm. Between just having that Deanston 12 and then the Allardyce 18, sweetness levels popped up big time. You still have a little bit of that nuttiness because um, this one is is all um is all oloroso there's no px in this one and it's just that almost earthy um i'm gonna say meaty steakish <laughs> uh nuttiness of that oloroso mm, 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 mm. So Dash, even the killer is a cons isn't a consistent brand in here. It is hard to find. Um, there have been um, murmurs of the port that ate port finish this year's um, around town, but I've yet to see it. We'll see. Balvenie uh, again, friend. We're not. That's. <laughs> I'm real happy for you, but. This guy gets some bottles, y'all. He he's got a fabulous palette, um, but I don't think that one's core cool range, boo. Um, how are the prices? Prices over here have been kind of crazy. They popped up big time in my area. I know that part. Hey, Gary, good to see you here, Arden American. I just like saying Arden American. Um, it's kind of it's it's good. I I don't we don't get as much of that as I'd like to. Um, hopefully we'll get some more down here. So Dustin is like, if you want Pete and Sherry, Lagavulin 25. Wow. Yeah. Top shelf. Your top shelf Dustin for a reason. That's a fine, fine bottle. Particularly. Uh, uh, uh. So Gary's uh, just bought the third bottle of Oloroso Cast Strength Heavily Repeated single cast. That sounds delicious. It sounds really good. Now, hmm, I can't you can't see it it's over on the this side. No, this side. Ah, right back there. Got it. I haven't opened it yet, Andrew, but I got it. I'm excited about it. Um, but yeah, smoke and peat, smoky and sweet, right? Like a barbecue sauce. It's smoky and sweet. That's why we like it down here, down here in the south. Um, so Daniel said for another, another for Aaron fans, the um, Macure Moore Fingals cut sherry cask finish, heavy peat, lots of sherry. I know I probably butchered that, but you know, just Aaron. I don't know if you may saw Roy's Instagram today, but or on Barflies Facebook, but he's at Aaron. Ah, I'm so jealous. So jealous. Um, yum, yum, yum. So Chad says he has an Aaron rare cast 15 Bordeaux. Continually have to put down or it'll be gone in one sitting. Is that good? Oh, man. Yeah. You know, and so that's interesting because you, every, Every one of these distilleries that have a good solid cord range, they do what they do really well. But it's interesting which ones then go out and do like something with the special sauce, you know, or just kind of turn it up to 11. You don't see, at least I don't see any particular specialty bottles. Um, I mean, I, I guess like Glenfiddich will come out with their grand crew and there are other things like that and no disrespect on that, but they're still mass market. You don't see something. They're not in a position to do a specialty single cask for stuff. I mean, they might, but it's not going to be something I'll ever see, you know, whereas Aaron consistently has a good 10, you know, and, and it's got, it's non-stage, uh, non-age statement versions that are really good. And then they'll do a specialty bottle that just knock your socks off. It's just crazy. Crazy, crazy, crazy. 
um, it's interesting. People are talking about, you know, like the exchange rates and that has a lot to do with it too. I mean, when the EU were looking pretty good, um, but it's still against the British pound, it's still kind of, kind of crazy. Um, do you have any Dingston in your house today? Toya Dram, friend. Yeah. Let's just see what else we've got going. So um, let's talk about Highland Park a little bit too. Um, because I know we got a couple of folks on here that are really into Highland Park. And I think, you know, they kind of <laughs> they kind of went off on the marketing rabbit hole and really got into I think that that brought some noise to their their expressions, but there's but at the core of it, <laughs> pun intended, they still make some really, really good, good bottlings. Um, like I said, my 12 cast strength is at the can. Um, and then I have um this 15 right now. They had um what was the one, Jim, if you're still on, uh is it full volume? That it was 17 years old. We had it when the dummies did their Highland Park dinner. I was really surprised at how good that one was. But yeah, so Highland Park is another really great, great one. Aaron explores volume three, Kildonan and <laughs> Plato, 21 year old, small batch, X Sherry butts, punchins, and ruby port pipes. Mm. Yeah. But that's fun to look at if you, for a dusty or an auction. That's interesting. Um, hey, Peter, glad you could join us tonight. Um, oh, whoa. So, Daniel, you got a rose bank? Goodness gracious. Well, that's pretty cool. Good, yeah, definitely congratulations on that. And um, you see, I'm catching up. Longmore should not be slept on. So, yeah, Longmore. I've had a couple of Longmores, but they haven't been core range. They've been SMWS bottles. That's interesting. Those old Glendros are just another level compared to today's. Yeah, that, I mean, they don't. And and the thing is, too, you don't know what you don't know. <laughs> so if you never had the old ones, <laughs> it's hard to see that. And, and I think that that is kind of a trip up for people that might be coming into Scotch whiskey. And you'll say, oh, well, you know, this is something I like. Oh, but it was so much better back in the day. And it, it may have been. And I know a lot of like the things that came out in the 80s before Scotch kind of hit the wall, um, you know, things like that. People that have been in their journey that long um, have a good reference to be able to do a comparison. But someone who's just coming in, their palate's only going to know what they know um, unless they are are able to get something that's that old. Um, but but yeah, I mean, these these. These the, the current bottlings, especially Glendro, are not bad, but um, you know, to be able to figure out what they what they were before. So we're in the Glendro, greater than 12 is the common bottlings at the common prices. Goodbye, good old times. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's lots of things we can say goodbye to that, you know, and not just scotch whiskey prices. <laughs> uh gas prices would be another one, but anyway. Um, so Mike, you're having a Glendro eight, the healing. Ooh. I like that. That is a very tasty bottle. I've had some of that too. Um, so you mean the older Glendronics are older whiskey and the newer ones? Yes. So those older ones, um, like this 18 that I have right now is probably, I, I'd have to get the chart out, but I think it's about 21 year old whiskey in it called 18 because of that. Um, the only one I buy each year is our big 10. If it's um, in the new gift set, <laughs> one day I'll go back and open them and compare from year to year. That's interesting. So you buy you you buy the our big 10 for the 10, you know, like for I, I bought one for the um, 
for the Dunnage House tin that it came in because they and Glenmore and G, of course, the same company. Um, they do some really good packaging at Christmas time, right? And I bought um art bag tin that had the little tin coffee mugs. I had to get those too. Um, but yeah, it would be interesting to see if you could if there's a an appreciable difference from year to year to year on that. Interesting. Art and Markin is almost as good as saying as Craig and Moore. Let's see if I said that right. <laughs> oh, the second dram. Oh, kill Karen heavily peated. Came back from Shre ba Shreveport back in May when it was down. Oh, the Grand Cane visiting Wise family. Well, you just need to come a little bit further down south to Baton Rouge, friend. Mm. Okay. We have to rectify the situation. You have not had an Arden Merkin. Again, I really just like saying that word. Um, yeah, we have to we have to get we have to rectify that situation for sure. Um <laughs> I I don't know if I can say it with a Scottish accent. I grabbed the Arden American right in the Crag and Moor. <laughs> oh, Breda, you're a hoot. So much so. Oh, uh, so uh, can we get the carches? Um, not often. I've seen them a couple of times. It's real hit and miss where I live. More likely we can get it in Texas. So that's usually when I'm calling Jennifer or Zach there and say, hey, friend, can you can you go over to Smith Street <laughs> and see if they have that that uh, carches? I've been able to get a couple, um, but not not too often in my area. Um, we might get a couple of bottles, uh, a couple of retailers here, get them, but sometimes they get gone before I can get to them for sure. Um, Glenn Levitt is pretty available. Uh, cast drink, single cast. Okay. Um, crazy prices on Glenn Moe's crazy good or crazy bad. Uh, Highland Park put out a bunch of single casts not too long ago. Yeah. Those are hard to find sure in my area um the big boys do it fairly often mac is exceptional yeah mccallan mccallan puts some of those things out there like whoo uh um but yeah <laughs> vikings rawr yeah <laughs> um i was telling gregor the other day he and i were talking time for a day and we were talking about uh hogmany the new year's eve celebration in edinburgh and um Particularly that one. I mean, I realize Hogmanay is the overall celebration, but I just want to go and see when, like, I think it's on the 30th, the 29th, 30th, when they do the Viking. Jennifer and I need to do this. We need to go over there and walk in the mile long, uh, basically, promenade of holding a, a real fire torch as if we are the Vikings taking Edinburgh. Um, I really want to see that one day. Kind of crazy. Um, da, 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 da. So haven't had the opportunity to try the Aaron Bodega. Hopefully I can find a bottle. Do so. It's, it's very nice. Full volume. Yes. That was X uh, straight X bourbon. I really like that bottle. And and for from what I remember, it's 17 years old and it's very reasonably priced um, for sure. Uh, original HP was six to seven with fantastic basic starter. Absolutely. Oh. <laughs> and 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 tonight, Hoagie, our <laughs> our comedian, uh, Hoagie's in Berlin. If y'all if y'all don't know Hoagie, he's he's a a whirlwind of knowledge, um, especially when it comes to um, whiskey. You would open a distillery named Lowland Park. Please tip your waitress. Yes, <laughs> that's that's hilarious. Um, talking about 12, 15, and 18 are still, uh, geez, I'll uh, quit looking at them and the marketing's just lose. Oh, on the Highland Park. Yeah, uh, legit, I think is what he was saying. Um, yeah, it it's it's interesting. Sometimes that can cloud 
you know, it kind of gets in the way, right? And I'm going back and forth between the Deanston and I haven't done Pete tonight. Um, I was looking through the list. So I put out on Instagram, you know, tell me what you think your, your favorite core ranges are. And I think we pretty much hit one, hit them except for two. Actually, no, Amroot came in one, which I haven't had too much Amroot as far as, you know, world whiskeys go. Um, so chime in if someone else has, has had a good bit of, of Amroot. Um, I might have to look at, at doing more of that. Um, but we talked about everything except three that were on those. So Glen Morangy, Glen Tronic, uh, Highland Park, Deanston, Brooklady, Edward Some We talked Ardbeg, Lafroig, Amroot. There's three other ones that I got answers on. So I want to ask you about that. And here is one of them. And that would be Bunahaven. As far as core range and, you know, really constant, good tasting. Now I know this one has, has changed quite a bit from what I understand. Again, this is one of those that I did not have early bottling experience with. Um, the talking to Mark Broda, um, talking to um, Bob H. Those guys have had the earlier versions of the Buna that have said, you know, there's there's definitely a difference in it. But nowadays, I know what I'm going to get if I get this Buna, you know, here. So that's um, that was one another one. Um, let's see, Andrew, what'd you say? You need to go to the Shetland up Helly A. <laughs> go go to Shetland for up Helly A. I don't know what that is. <laughs> I don't know what that is, friend. Um, Scotch for dummies actually have a Rosebank 21 to still pretty tasty. Mm, mm. Yeah. Is that in the locker at the restaurant or is that in which one of your bars? Just so, you know, the next time I'm in Indiana, I kind of know. <laughs> uh, I love it. Um, but yeah. So another one that was mentioned that, um, so there was that one. Boonhaven was one. Craig Allocky. I mean, it's not Craig Allocky. Glenn Allocky. Glenn Allocky. So Billy Walker now. Um, their core range. Um, I've got a new camp dram coming out on the 15. Um, so I'm really liking most everything that comes out, um, of that distillery for sure. But I have to say, I'm really kind of surprised that folks here tonight, um, yeah, I'm going to hold this one for a second. Um, but yeah, when we're talking about Boone of the 18 was all good. It's hard to find the, um, to find the new ones, but remember it's so good. Yeah, I was able to get get one of the 18s over in Texas again. Something that's really hard to find here. Um, yes, Hoagie, thank you for being here tonight. It is very late for you over there. I think it's probably like three or four a.m. God love you, friend. Thanks for being here so much. I I really do appreciate it for sure. Um, but yeah, Sabuna. So but the but the one, and we're coming up on top. But the one distillery that I got the most um was about spring bank that most people just absolutely adored all the core range of spring bank and it it is kind of hard to figure out you know what exactly is core range for spirit uh spring bank they have so many different types of bottlings um this is the local barley nine I'm trying to remember which year before last I think and then you know I've just poured up my last of my 18 and I've had a fresh sherry cask. I think that was 14, but you know, so tell me about, <laughs> tell me about, um, your favorite spring banks. And I'm looking here or what other ones have we missed out on tonight? Um, no OP others. And that one, that one got me. Um, 
I mean, it is malt madness, right? Salty and malty. Go, love that. I think, though, because I hemmed and hauled about that one, Mark. And, and I think it's kind of because they changed their lineup a little bit. I, I fully accept that I, you know, love the 17 with all my heart. <laughs> this, that's, uh, and my, my one loan bottle that, that's left of that. Um, the 15 and 18 had the 15 this week, um, this weekend. And it was really, I, it was really good. Again, it's one of those things, but it's different than what you were used to. So you have to just say, okay, life in a vacuum. It's just what it is. It's not going to be the 17. It's going to be the 15 and, and just go with that. You know, um, definitely the Glen Scotia's. That's another really great one. Long road cast strength. Absolutely. Um, you know, Springbank has spring banks of three for right. So you, you not only get spring bank, but you get actually kind of a four, you get spring bank, long grow and, and, uh, Hazelburn, but then, you know, they own Kilcarran too. So there's that, um, goodness. <sighs> Don't ever let us know where you live, man. Cause we all going to come up to your house <laughs> and go raid your bottles. Goodness gracious. Um, some of your favorites, just some of them. Those are beautiful, beautiful bottles. Jennifer and I, our, our friend Michael, um, that we got to know at the Isle of Whiskey Academy had a, a Springbank 21 that those late, Daniel will know, those late night drams back at somebody's apartment. Those were, mm, those were some really good ones for sure. Love or hate, mm, down more is consistent and food coloring arguments aside, it ain't bad. No, it isn't. It isn't. Um, you know, I've kind of talked about that before. So give you Glen Scotia over Springbank. Interesting. Interesting. They're very, they are very different, even though they're like spitting distance from each other. Um, but it, they are so good. Do miss OP 21, but I always keep a 12 open, always available. Yeah. Um, which is interesting. So we've got, we've got a lot coming up. Um, still working on, on shows coming up in the next couple of weeks, but looks like we might be doing a Sunday special show coming up. I'll tell you more about that uh, next week for sure. Yeah. Cause we're still, still working on the date. Um, but we're going to do one during the afternoon. So some of our um, UK and EU friends can join at a reasonable hour instead of in the middle of the night. Um, and I have a couple of special guests for that. Um, I'm super excited. We've got some big whiskey things happening here locally. Um, we've got the Louisiana Bourbon Festival is happening in November. And i um, I'm actually going to be doing a session for it and it's going to be scotch for bourbon drinkers. So is one more, one more way to get people into the fold and come to the dark side of single malts and leave their corn behind. Um, but kind of joking aside, it, it, I'm really super excited about doing that. And, um, We've been trying to do our, our bourbon group. Y'all heard me talk about our uh, bourbon society of Baton Rouge has worked so hard and in, in raising funds for the community and tried for three years to have this festival. But um, this year it's finally going to happen. So we're, we're we're excited about that and going to raise a lot of a lot of money for um, uh, cancer research. And um, it's just about sold out. So that's pretty exciting. And then over in Lake Charles, I'll be going over to the, um, smoke and barrel, um, whiskey and barbecue festival for that. That's got coming up. It's more, some more, um, videos. And again, we have fabulous Wi-Fi. Um, I want to thank again, Chad and Zach for joining the membership tonight to be a camp drummer. Um, you can uh, join as well. I'm going to just throw this in the, the chat real quick. I think I can do that. We'll see. Um, if you want to be part of that Camp Dram group um, and join some, some little perks, little fun stuff um, here and there, um, 
would love for y'all to be part of that. And thanks again for the, the super chats and all of that. Um, just kind of run through a couple more of these. Um, Dustin, I hope you don't ever have to move. <laughs> I really, um, I really do. Cause either that, or you just need to invite us all over and we'll help you drink some down. So you don't have to move all 700 of them. Good gravy, man. Um, more power to you for sure. For sure. Um, and in, in reality, that's about how many that the pot still has in Glasgow. <laughs> what a great comparison, Daniel. I love it. I love it. Um, that's awesome. It's actively curved. Yes, I'm always converting those. Um, it's amazing. We had a bottle share on Friday night. And um, I, I'm trying to think what I brought. Um, oh, I brought that Klein Leash, 19-year Klein Leash. Had bourbon people drinking it left and right. They had no idea. This is scotch. What? Um, it was great. It really was. So, but yes, we're going to, we're going to head out here, y'all. Thank you very so much for being here. Um, supporting, supporting the channel, supporting me, the encouragement. Again, thanks to our members and um, all of you for being here. I absolutely love it. I love it when we can get together on Tuesday nights. And until next Tuesday night, I will see you later and slonge y'all. <laughs>